Oh! Oh, I did not see you there, Jesus Christ. That really caught me right off guard. What's going on, guys? It's there. Oh, wow. 78th edition, Jamie. 78th edition of the Chronicles of Podcast? 78. We love it. We just we keep delivering. We just keep delivering, all right? So, but can you me one fate, right, guys? All of you lot, right? Stop sneaking up on us like that. We don't need it. But, Jamie, I believe right about here are the Chronicles of Jerry Rooney. They are, they're right, I can see them. Yeah, we're buzzing for this one, boys. Hit it! Hey, honey bunny, it's Rivka Reyes. This is Ron Wasserman, the nut that wrote Go Go Power Rangers. It's Boba Fett here. This is Molly Rennick from Living Dead Girl. It's WWE superstar legend, Davy Boy Smith's daughter, Georgia Smith. Hi, my name's Joe Rooney. I'm an actor, comedian, and you're listening to the Chronicles of Podcast. Shoes and socks are kind of like carpet and floor. Oh, you get them on like shampoos and like washes and it is. It's like packed with essential oils. You're like, oh, is it? Can you actually specify what oils these are, please, to make sure these actually are essential? And then can you give me a scientific breakdown of each oil to make sure that I can see what it actually does for me? public service announcement for those listening to this and going I don't know what Blue Waffle is I'm going to Google this don't don't do it it's our Just gift do from it. us to you is the knowledge to not Google Blue Waffle okay hello everybody and welcome to the 78th edition of the Chronicles of Podcast and are the chronicles of joe rooney is it i the bearded brummy jamie and joining me as always join me ladies and gentlemen as always is this handsome fella right here i believe i found what i'm looking for hey yeah (laughs) island's finest I literally got the very, very end. I was like, I have no idea. And then when I heard, da, 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 I was like, ah, oh, I know what song that is. <laughs> finally. I can finally get out of this cage. Guys, I'm out of here. Job's done. You got <laughs> it. You got it. <laughs> Jimmy, um, I genuinely saw a kid wearing his cap sideways. And I was like, oh, my God. Year 2000's cold. They want their style back. But do you oh remember God. when, did you ever still, or like, Slightly diangular. <laughs> so the, the lid was over this way a little bit. I've like, never heard the word diangular before. That is, I don't even know if that is a word. Diagonal, it's probably not. It's like, great. Di- <laughs> it was literally like emo cap because it covered one eye. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah. People still wear their caps like that. Although, was it full on like, sideways? I mean, it was full and it wasn't even resting on the head because I don't think he actually get it on properly, but it was literally just like resting on the top of his cranium. And then pointed to the side, and I was like, oh my god, I, don't know. I haven't seen that in years. Oh, okay, he's just a complete fool. Got it, okay. Okay. Fuck. But I don't understand, <laughs> I don't understand, like, the style, like, why, I've why? Never got it. I've never understood the people that wear a baseball cap, and they literally balance it on their head. Like, they have to walk like this, so it doesn't fall, because they've balanced it. Put yeah, it on! Or they, or they put the lid up, where it's, like, right directly up, so it's like, the caps on the back of the head rather than the top. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it just really fascinated me because I was like, I remember people should do that. That is mental. <laughs> the people that do that thing, I feel like going to... You do know the purpose of, of a, a, a cap, right? That's to keep the sun out of your eyes. That's not going to do nothing. It's going to reflect it down into your eyes. I mean, <laughs> my, let's be honest, Jamie. I wear a hat every day. You so do. There's no yes, sun. There's no sun. There's no... Yeah, but this is because just... you don't want to show off the egg. Whereas these people do. This is true. This is true. And I had a hoodie on earlier. I've been, I've been feeling a bit wonky today, boys and girls. But um, excuse me, I was literally, I had my hoodie on and I had my hood up, but no glasses and no hat. And I just like, looked at myself and went, who the fuck is that? Like, who is that person? That looks weird. So I was like, glasses back on, hat back on, hood. There we go, there we boys are. and girls. There, <laughs> back, back where I belong. Um... So yeah, how are you anyway? You're right. Yeah, I'm very good. I'm very good. I'm a little bit sleepy because I'm working nights, but we're all good. We're all good. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you transition for the afternoons, the mornings. Like I just don't. Like fair play to you, my friend. You know, you uh, 
It's definitely something look your age. <laughs> oh, cheers, mate. I was going to say that's the secret. I don't cope. I just <laughs> breeze on through. Yeah. Is it li- literally every shift that you're there? It's like <laughs> <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> literally. If I'm mornings, afternoons, nights, no matter what I'm on, about halfway through, I'll start to go. My chair, <laughs> guaranteed. Oh yeah, of course. It was. Yeah, that's that's the classic gym. <laughs> That's the journey way, but three three a.m. That's pretty decent because normally we've got nine p.m. Yeah, p.m. Yeah, <laughs> or nine. Oh, James, should we watch a show? Yeah, sure. Amazing. Do you asleep? Fuck's <laughs> <laughs> sake! I, I have I found out a little factoid this week, which I thought I'd share with you because we all know after last week you enjoy mine and Claire's bizarre conversations. So we have we found out a factoid this week. Did you know that cat cheese exists? Wait, hang on. Wait, right. Let, so, cat, because your accent made it sound like something else. So, cat cheese. Cat, feline, cheese. Yes. Who's making that? Uh, the French, I think. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Basically, this whole start. <laughs> this started out as some. I, I, why, I can never remember how this conversation started. I don't know. But the comment of milk came into it. And then Claire we went on to cat cheese. I mean, cat milk, sorry. And then Claire turned around and went, cat cheese. I was like, does that exist? Is cat cheese a thing? So I looked it up and it is fromage du chat, which is what makes you think it's French. So you can get cheese made of cat milk. Who the fuck is eating cat cheese? <laughs> first is first, first, first. Can we just rewind a little second there? The yes. fact that you just said fromage du chat and then went, I think that's for him. <laughs> Sounds like it's French. Well, obviously is... that brand is French. Yeah, what, I meant French. Is, what I meant is, I don't. I assume the French are making it as well. It's probably a Belarusian or something <laughs> ridiculously weird. Do you know what I mean? I can't ever wonder what other animals are people milking for cheese. I, I want to know. Now. I mean, I don't want to know how people milk a cat. I mean, would they can't milk a cat. Can you? No, I don't. Do you know what? I don't want to know the answer. I don't want to pro- know. They produce milk, so you must be able to. I really, really don't want to fucking know. All right. I want to know who's brave enough to try milk a cat because that can't be an well, easy task. That as well. Yeah. <laughs> The eyes of <laughs> oh. how, how many cats do you need to milk to say make said block of cheese? Because I imagine small. a fucking lot. Yeah. So right. whoever's that's, making that's cat a... cheese, please stop, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> yeah, this, this this day and age, this world is just beyond. Like, for example, Jamie, what is it with people that can really dance and know how good they are? Wanting people in clubs to know how good they are at dancing and have people also in the circle clapping and being amazed by how good they are at dancing. I've never, ever got this. I've never understood it. Why, why in a club, nobody gives a fuck how well you can dance. Nobody gives a shit. No. There's these people that come in in their fucking baggy jeans and their massive trainers and they like start doing like hip hop shit. Like, what kind of, yeah, yeah. I'm going to make sure everyone's watching me. Yeah? Everyone's what? Yeah, there we go. Or someone can do Michael Jackson for no reason. <laughs> There's always someone who could do a moonwalk. Always. He's dead and he's a pedo, so why do you want to copy him anyway? But still, it's just like, you know, it just, I don't get it. I don't get it. People start kicking up, like, <laughs> and they start doing all the, like, the dance and shit. You're like, cool. But why do people circle and go, yeah, I'm going to spoil my own night watching you instead of enjoying myself? <laughs> and you always know someone's about to bust the group because they walk into the middle, clap their hands. And then just start oh. going for it. As soon as someone claps, you know, shit is going down. Someone's about to have yeah. a boogie. Yeah, and they're going to crisscross their legs and start spinning on eyes. Like, great, well done. So people that do oh. it in the middle of city centres with a boombox going and people stand around watching them like, why are you randomly no. dancing in town? They're making money out of that, though, surely, right? Yeah, that I kind makes of, sense. I, I kind of get that, but just I've never thought to myself, do you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to go to town. I'm just going to have a boogie in the middle of the street. I, do you know what? I, I, <laughs> and especially in clubs. I think that they go, oh, no, it's going to get me some, some tonight. And they go and do it. And you can, you can definitely see the girls going, <laughs> um, I'm going to marry him. I'm yeah, going to have dancing just, babies with him. Absolutely <laughs> mental. He's everything Abs- I ever wanted in a dancing man. But, Yeah. <laughs> The real thing I really wanted to know, and I feel this will probably go into your conversation somehow, what exactly are essential oils? <laughs> Firstly, right, how do you know they're essential? First things first. And how do you know that what's essential for you isn't essential for me? 
Yeah. What? <laughs> Are these all round essential? Did somebody test every single fucking human on this planet and go, that's definitely essential, works on everybody? My question is, how how essential is it? Because I don't think I've ever brought an essential oil and I'm, I'm fine. Exactly. Oh, you get them on like shampoos and like washes. And it's, it's like packed with essential oils. You're like, oh, is it? Can you actually specify what oils these are, please, to make sure these actually are essential? And then can you give me a scientific breakdown of each oil to make sure that I can see what it actually does for me? Rather what's than so essential me. about it? Well, exactly. Exactly, you, my friend. Do you give me food? Do you give me air? Do you give me water? I'm pretty certain those are the only real essentials around here. But Is this going to moisturise my skin? Is this going to vibrates my skin or is it going to make me plumper or orange or what what exactly does an essential oil do vibrate my skin ah oh those essential oils i put on earlier yeah how, how do you know to do that though no one no one knows i know how essential i know i had someone ring me and go all right mate yeah so it's your essential oils test now yes two years <laughs> running isn't it so we've got to make sure you come back every two to make sure these are still essential for you yeah 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 thursday at six all right like it's never happened. Why is the doctor not a phone? You go for a blood test. You go, You're running very low on your essential oils. We'll get, no. we'll get you, you some. Know what? I might actually start asking people in boots, or I might actually go, and how essential are these oils? Discuss. Explain to me. Oh, no, mate. I just work here on a Saturday. I, just... yeah. <laughs> I might turn to one of them wankers. I might go and target the youngest person there that obviously just works a Saturday and just go, Excuse me, love. Essential oils. How essential are these oils? How many oils are there to make it essential? <laughs> if I don't buy this shampoo, am I going to die? Are these, are these that essential? How essential I, are they to me? How long do I have left to live? Tell me, Stephen. <laughs> I genuinely, with recent said about shampoo then, I genuinely bought Alpacin thinking it would grow my hair back. <laughs> what? Don't believe that either. Don't believe that either. <laughs> that German German shampoo Alpacin there was like, oh, make sure your hair grow back. It bloody... That's <laughs> nicht gut, nicht gut, nein, nein. Nine years in Alperson, yeah. <laughs> they would make a fucking fortune if it did. Let's be honest. They make a fucking fortune anyway because people believe that shit. I mean, can you see her there? Because I definitely can't. <laughs> Fuck me. Anyway, you weren't, you, you weren't using it long enough. That's what it was. Is that what it is? That's you, what it is. That's it with shampoo, though. Like, how long? Do you, how long do you actually leave it in for? I, I'll be honest. I do still use it because hair still grows, I'm just not on top. But I, I still, I, how long is it like a, a, a correct amount of time Ooh. to leave shampoo in for? Is it like a, is it a, like a five, 10 second thing or do you have to stand there for a minute or two and go, sure it'll work eventually? To be honest, I wonder if it actually says on the bottle. I've never read the bottle of shampoo. I just figured I could work it out for myself. I've never really read the instructions. Well, I mean, mine's fallen out, so <laughs> I guess mine's not long enough. <laughs> You're, you weren't doing it right, whatever it was. <laughs> Massage into scalp and then rinse off. I think that's all of what it says. Yeah, do I don't, I don't think they even know. Head and shoulders probably, probably don't even know. They're probably there going, fuck, well, how are we going to word this, guys? <laughs> how do we word to make sure that people don't act just rinse it straight off or leave it on to too long? But We're I'm... still trying to work out why we put shoulders in their name. People don't use shampoo in their shoulders. You never know. <laughs> hairy shoulders. Yeah, exactly. There could be some really <laughs> hairy beast that's like, do you know what? Austin Powers, for example, or Persians, they'd be like, oh, I really fancy rubbing all this in. Yeah, let's get it all going. That's probably how they have that, the, the thickest ruggers going. I just like those are the two things, Austin Powers or Persians. <laughs> <laughs> They're very heavy. Uh, I don't know why it's Scottish. Anyway, um, <laughs> I am feeling wonky as ass today, boys and girls. So I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> What's been going on, man? What, 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 what? Do you know what? Tell me, fill me in. What have you been doing? Craig David, me. What have you been doing? <laughs> Not a fat lot, to be honest. I've mostly been working, reannering, as always, working nights these past few days, which is fine. I don't mind working nights. Um, last week I was not a very well boy at all for like twenty four hours. It was really weird. Is that where? Have you passed it on? I have. I passed it over via the microphone. You motherfucker. I don't, it was really weird though. I woke up. Didn't feel good at all. Threw up, passed out, hit my head. Like, and then was rubbish in the day. And then the following day, I was absolutely fine. I was like, yeah, you said you hit your head, and you made it. You made it sound like you collapsed, but you didn't. You were on your knees, already yeah, on at the floor. Yeah. 
got to add a bit of drama to it, make it sound a bit and, spicier and it, than it was. Yeah, but you, you know, <laughs> I, I interpreted it as you smacked your head and you were refusing to go to hospital. I was like, no, you're a fucking idiot. No, I but I want you. Know, I would have loved. I would have if you didn't hit your head. It just went. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like a, a, a glass just clinks. Like, that would be savvy incredible. No, I man, wish we had sound effects when we walked around. i will be the best. I always wished I had a theme tune. They told me to walk through a door. It's like, hey, it's me. You get so sick of that, though. Oh, you, you really so would. sick of it playing. But at the same time, if you hear people's theme tunes as they walk in, you go, fuck, it's him. <laughs> you run. This is very, very true, actually. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, always a, <laughs> it's always a massive... Unless they change their theme song, then... Which you can only do once every 10 or 15 years, isn't it? That's something stupid. But actually, now I've said this, imagine you're in like a really crowded place, like a pub, and the theme tune goes on for every single walk. Oh, person mate. You'd go mad. You'd be like, no, I'm done with this place. I can't I can't deal with this. So yeah, theme tunes are not a good idea. I'm glad we've solved that mystery. Um, what else have I done? I went to Jumping Fun in Cheltenham, that giant fancy castle place we went to before. That was really fun. And I went out with Claire. We had a night out, had some food, had some drinks. That was good fun. Discussed cat cheese. Was, you know. That's such a mental... Like, it's one of those things where you you want to Google it, but you don't. Oh, I did. I did Google it. She was like, why are you Googling it? Google does not need to know this information. I was like, it's fine. They want to come Also, out. ladies and gentlemen, for anyone listening to this, if anybody ever goes, Google this, don't do it. <laughs> because you know it's going to be something fucking horrific. Like, for example, Blue Waffle. We'll take Blue Waffle as an example. Oh. And people are like, oh, go on, Google, Google that. Go on, have a, it's just a waffle that's blue. Boom. And you're like, oh, my fucking Christ. If yeah. anyone ever goes up to you, goes, mate, 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 Google this. Go on, you'll love it. Don't do it. Yeah. Public service announcement. For those listening to this and going, I don't know what Blue Waffle is. I'm going to Google this. Don't. Don't do it. It's our just gift from it. us to you is the knowledge to not Google Blue Waffle. Okay. Simple. Right. Other than that, little catch up because I forgot to mention it last week where I was. 24. I'm on season seven, episode 22. All I'm going to say is because I missed it last week is Bill Buchanan, you hero, you legend. That was emotional. And from where I am now, I'm going to say Tony Almeida, you fucking heartbreaking son of a bitch. <clears throat> I literally shouted out at the TV, Tony, no! I was not happy. Here we are. Fucker. He lured me in, Tom. He lured me in. He fooled me. I've always been Team Almeida, though. Always. So I totally get it. Um, Harris cried her bloody little heart out every time he either switched side. He didn't even know what side he's on. That's the thing. Oh, I was heartbroken. I was just like, no, why would you do this to me? I believed in you, Tony. <laughs> but I realised I've made a mistake. The movie takes place between six and seven. I should have watched it before I started seven. Yes. I forgot about the movie. So once I finish seven, I need to go watch the movie and then I'll carry on with eight. Because you find out what happens to her son, the president's son. Yes, and obviously with General Juma and all that. So sort of, I need to actually, I need to go watch that. I, I completely forgot about the movie. I was just like, oh, season seven, Tom said seven's good. I need to start it. But yeah, got a bit carried away. The only problem is the movie isn't anywhere. So it's on Disney Plus, isn't it? Nope. Oh, I thought it was. Nope. That's 24 Legacy. That's a spin off that got cancelled after one season. Oh, I thought I saw 24 Redemption on there. The Redemption is nuts on there. Sorry. Damn it. I'll try and find a way of sourcing it. Anyway, how about you? What are you? How are you, my friend? What are you up to? Well, as I was saying, I feel wonky as ass. I'm about to go to Oxford tomorrow for work for two days. I'm a bit like, oh my god, but that's got to fight through. But like I'm sitting here right now, boys, I'm I'm struggling. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I've not really been anywhere. I've done anything. Um, obviously, Scotland lost to Ireland in the rugby on Sunday. Uh, that was disappointing, um, to be quite honest. We're playing way better now, but you know, in a World Cup seat in a World Cup year, but it's you know, I'm the best team in the world. So um we 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 were we were neck and neck half time and I thought fuck me, we're gonna beat the best team in the world, holy sh and then they cast second half one. <laughs> Don't be fucking stupid, you twat. Um <laughs> and then absolutely laid us out. So um yeah, it's gutting, but just got the Italians last now. We need to beat them. Secure third to be above England, Wales, 
Uh, I'll be happy. Um, That's all you care about now. Uh, just, just well, it's, it's, away. All, it's all I can care about. We can't catch France or Ireland, so might as well. Um, so did that, like literally, man, we've been watching, um, I watched Robin Williams come and my mind again. Um, we're having a bit of a moment where, well, excuse me, sorry. Um, I just wanted to watch him again. I, can't, I was watching um, The Me You Can't See on Apple TV, which is all, it's Oprah Winfrey and Prince, and sorry, Harry. Um, and they were talking about um, like their mental health and stuff like that. And like, obviously when his mum died and the cameras were in his face all the time, et cetera. And Oprah had like the worst that I've ever seen in my life. Um, so I was intrigued. I was absolutely intrigued. So I was, I've watched three episodes and I'm really loving it. But episode two was Robin Williams. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, so it was really hard to not obviously get upset. Um, the man's a hero to me. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, it was tough. And obviously it's his son just talking more about his life and stuff and like how it affected him. Um, it's really interesting. A really, really great documentary. So I was like, do you know what? I, want, I just want to watch Kevin's Out of My Mind again. So I paid a tenner, I think, for our TV, so I've got it forever. I uh, just watched it again. It's it's so heavy, like two hours, but there are some moments in there where I was fucking crying my eyes out. They put loads of his stand-up in, or loads of his just, like, interviews and stuff, and fucking hell. There was moments where I couldn't breathe, and then there was moments where I couldn't breathe because I was upset, and I, was, I couldn't breathe again because I was laughing. So it's just great. Like, it's so great. So like, there's another documentary they've released called Robin's Wish, so I'm going to watch that as well. Um, and there's another one that just released with loads of comedians that knew him talk about him and their stories and stuff. So I just watched that as well. Oh, that sounds um, good. Yeah, like I just, it's crazy, man. It's just so crazy with how with what happened and stuff like that. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I really enjoyed that. That got a lot. I got a lot out of my system. <laughs> um, but other than that, boys, like not a lot's really going on to be honest. It's just just reentering. Um, but I did my time. We had we had. A couple of great interviews. Um, obviously, one is out with this show, and one's out next week with Alex Siegel. So it's just uh, life could be better. Really, there's some good ways to say stuff as well. My interview with Dawn Raid was dropped today. Uh, Simon from Dawn Raid. So if you're a black metal fan, go and enjoy that. Go and listen to that bad boy. It's a great band name, Dawn Raid. I like that. It's a great name. He did tell me what it meant. It was from a poem, I think. He's a he's a big mm. poet. Like he works in construction, and loves poetry, mental. Um, yes, great story. Great story. Um, I th- I'm, so that was released today. So go check the Razor's Edge uh, or the Razor's Edge Rocks as they're known on social media because obviously um, other people have already stolen that name. So um, yeah, how's that, Jane? Not a fat lot really going on, buddy. It's been a quiet one this week. It's been a quiet one. But uh, I suppose we should check in with our friend over there then, I guess. Come so, on, oh, Braden, what's going on? Stay cozy, bud. All right. Is this thing on? Well, howdy doody, everybody. This is Braden Barry from Say We Can Fly, founder of Stay Cozy Clothing. Your one-stop shop for the coziest, most fashionable hoodies, t-shirts, and more. Gorsh, Mickey. That's right, folks. And we're proud to say that we are now sponsoring... The Chronicles of Podcast. Ouch. Hosted by Tom and Jamie. <laughs> like, you can get 10% off, man. That's right, Shaggy. Just use the special code, The Chronicles, at checkout. Oh, boy. Oh. I will say it, and I will say it again. I've said it before, even, and I'll say it again. Greatest advert ever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, Jamie. <laughs> yes, sir. I do believe it's time for your favourite segment of the week. Oh, here it is. Are you ready to be treached? It's time for Callum Treachings. Do you want to know something? Callum will be able to tell you. And Callum's Treachings. It's cereal soup. Ooh. Callum is back once again for another week to treach the nation. And I believe, Jamie, we should get started. Oh, yeah. What is Callum Treachings this week? Shoes and socks are kind of like carpet and floor, except they're just sort of attached to your feet instead. <laughs> I love it. Carpet, carpet, carpet feet. I love it. It's great. It's not. Oh, the socks aren't as rough, are they? I think some carpets can be quite like hefty. Yeah. Either a, so, oh shit! What is it? Low pile? Is it pile? Oh my god! I don't oh, know. Carpets. I, I can't fucking remember. I swear. 
I'm pretty certain. I remember seeing it on the internet. I don't know if it was a real thing or a joke thing, but it was like a shoe that was basically just like a carpet tile. So it just felt like you're walking on carpet wherever you were going. No way, really? I'm not sure why I'm doing this action for walking, but there we go. But it sort of, sounds like the sort of thing you'd buy from like JML. Come now on, oh, JML, God. the carpet oh, shoe. Oh, <laughs> fucking hell. Every, like... <laughs> Two minutes that I repeat over. Most of them the garden centre, that's all it is fucking yes. is. Oh, the like, little stands. Dude, like, fuck off. Yeah. It's a pen that turns into a rake that turns into a hose that is a chimney. Get down with JML. <laughs> Do you like the feel of carpets, but also want to go for a walk? Introducing Carpet Shoe from JML. But it's like a transformer. If you want to wear a floor shoe, you could transform it into tiles or flooring. Only at JML. Sick of the living room and feel like being in the kitchen? Change it to tile shoe. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to swim with sharks but print ink at the same time? Now you can! With C printer! <laughs> Use the water as your ink. Get an octopus, squeeze him in, and away you go! Watch out for them sharks! <laughs> We forgot to give you a cage only at JMO. <laughs> <coughs> oh, but he's absolutely right, though. They do, they go together perfectly. I like that. Have you ever wanted to be a grasshopper but fly to the moon? <laughs> now you can with Grass Rocket only at JMO. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really mental how you don't make those comparisons. I don't ever think because I'm, I'm still on carpet right now. I've got no socks on. Oh, I've got my socks on. I feel like I'm in a weird middle ground. I feel like I'm just wearing <laughs> socks but are in the bottom of my feet. Because obviously I'm not going to just Good point, rip, rip the carpet up and start wrapping it around my toes. <laughs> <laughs> That's your deposit gone. Don't care. My feet are warm. <laughs> Fit your carpet. Can I, have some, can I have some of the offcuts, please? I want to make some carpet shoes. Thank you yeah. very much. <laughs> Wait, just wait now. Give it a month or two, and then JML actually go introducing carpet shoe. Like you <laughs> bastards, listen to our show, you fuck you, motherfucker. Carpet uh, shoe like, trademark, Callum. Jamie and Tom. It shows that Callum's the host. Like, ah, <laughs> oh, you stole our friend as well, you fuckers. <laughs> but Jamie, we shall we shall move on. What else is Callum preaching us this week? <laughs> Google Street View is going to look mad looking back in like 50 years. That is a very oh. good point. I find Jamie. it weird looking on Google Street View now. <laughs> Why? I've never used it. So I... oh, so I'll look at like houses from where I lived when I was a kid. I was like, how the fuck is that the same place? Like, I remember that place being massive. It's tiny. Oh, yeah, you're only like nine. Everything's big. <laughs> No, I've never, I've never thought that I'd like to go and have a look at shit that I used to live in. I've never done that. You've never done it? Oh, it Harrison used to do it all the time. Be like, look, Dad, this is a picture outside your house 10 years ago. And I was like, why do you have this? He's like, oh, I was on Google Street View. I love this place. It must be a kid thing. It must be a kid <laughs> thing, surely. Because I've never thought, you know what? I'd love to go and see that place that I was beating up in. That'd be great. <laughs> I can't say I thought right. that, but... Do you know what I mean? Oh, I'd love to go and have a look at the place where I had to live with her in. It. Uh. Um, but the thing is, dude, Cheltenham's not changed at all, so it just all looks the same anyway. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, it's all it's exactly the same as it was 10, 15 years ago. But he said in 50 years' time, yeah, Cheltenham good. will still look exactly the same as it's at. It'll still have all the same fucking people in it as well. Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you all, really. If you really listen to this, just the council walking around putting their flowers up. We're Cheltenham, we're known for flowers, and that'll never fucking change. I'd horse racing. <laughs> I've got that this week, it? I reckon it'll become one big fucking horse track. That's what's going to come. Cheltenham's going to be one big fucking horse thing. <laughs> You'll be sat there churning, eating your crisps, watching TV, and the horse will fucking run by or run <laughs> through the living room. <laughs> oh, but it races are on again, fuck's sake. <laughs> They never end, Bill. Yes, I know, Deirdre. I know they never fucking end because some twat decided to let them build the entire race course around the whole fucking town. I wouldn't spot, especially the ring road in the city centre, just because of one giant truck. And I bet you Ireland is just, there's just nobody there. <laughs> no one's years. there. They're all, they're all in Cheltenham, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, right now, yeah. Very good point, actually. Yeah. They're all riding the horses. Oh, That's you fucking bastard. I've got to travel to Cheltenham tomorrow when it's race week. Fuck. 
Good luck. Oh, I wish you all the best, my friend, because that's going to be fucking horrible. Just be worse. Coming back. Yep. Hooray! Yay! Oh no! <laughs> well, if you will do that to yourself, my friend, if you will do that, this, this should be. You should have gone Monday. <laughs> you should have gone. Fuck it's race week. I better go Monday. Oh no! I didn't think. I will change through. my shifts. You silly, silly ah. sausage. Anyway, come on, come on, reckon, cheer me up. Someone... <laughs> do you reckon Google Street View in fifty years' time will be through the eyes, just like? Doo, 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 woo, woo. Oh yeah. Look to, oh, like Black I'm... Mirror. Was it Google Glass or something like that that we were trying to launch years ago? It was basically like a pair of glasses. I have no oh, idea. Yeah, it was like a pair of glasses and it was like you could control it with your eye movements and shit. What? Yeah. Yeah, I'm weird. Not... Yeah. That, that, that's the future, my friend. That's the future. Have you watched Daddy Episode 2 yet? I have watched Daddy Episode 2. That's the AI. The AI, one, yeah. yeah. Fuck, man. That is, that is some weird shit. It is a little bit weird. Like scare, scary in a way. Like I know we're years off, but they keep saying everything's years off, and now literally your whole life is in this. Crazy yeah. man. In, t- in fifty years' That's time, it will be AI me and you hosting this show. Won't even be us. Yeah, probably. It'd be like with a little chip in the brain. We could hologram ourselves. Lying Always. in the old people's home, talking to each other from afar. <laughs> yeah. Still with the backgrounds up there. Like, <laughs> I don't know, speak. We have the ashes. David Attenborough. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what probably happened. And then we'll probably shit ourselves. These won't be backdrops. They'll be our little blankets while we're in our chairs all warm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like hologram din or something. Um, and finally, Jamie, what else is Callum preaching us this week? Cooking is far more essential skill than driving, but Everyone looks down on people who can't drive, yet no one really bats an eyelid if someone can't really cook. Oh, that's two people that can't drive. You're preaching to they choir, my friend. Two people that can't drive and one person that can't cook. <laughs> Jamie, that's when it's called that show. Oh, yeah, yeah, you <laughs> bastard. I was just trying to be funny. I was just trying to be funny because I know you can cook. I thought it was funny in my head, and then out loud, when nobody could actually hear my tone, like how the way I'm wording it or anything, it always made perfect sense. I read it and I was like, that son of a bitch didn't moan when I was making him fajitas and he was watching a football. Boy, that was one of the best evenings I think I've ever had. <laughs> like, genuinely, was on the, and that was the Brazil 7 2 game against Germany, yeah. the World Cup. Yeah, that was an insta- uh, Germany 7 2, sorry, not Brazil. Um, <laughs> That was absolutely crazy. That was one of the best nights you've ever had. <laughs> I've never. You, felt you like were like, house- "Oh my god, what's going on? What's going on?" <laughs> never felt like such a housewife in my life. It was the best. It was, that was amazing. <laughs> Good old Barclay Street. That was a great time. <laughs> um, <laughs> the plate. That's the house I discovered Braden in, so we can fly in. They can have in the back. That's the that's the house. That's the flat I discovered, so we can fly in. Oh. While I was while I was bathing, if you want to picture that, sorry about that. <laughs> I was bathing. I had second hour serenade. I'm just on shuffle, and it came on like the radio thing. And that's the first. He was the first person that came on, and by the river came on. And I was like, I really like this. And lo and behold, there we go. There we are. Now you're playing Rocket League in most nights. There we are. It's weird how these it things is. happen. It is a wonderful moment, but yeah, Helen makes a good point actually because I mean it's shit that I still can't drive now. Um, I, and obviously it's like way expensive now as well. Like it's far too expensive. Fucking yeah. insane. Um. I'd love to try and drive around Newport, but it's full of like, bah, 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 nah, woo, like oh great, yeah, I definitely yeah. I'll learn it. <laughs> I read that is one of my plans for this year to try and start learning. It's just yeah, you really? need to sell a kidney to try and afford there to do it. It's that fucking expensive. I mean, if you didn't have fifteen kids, <laughs> my head, every time, no matter what I say, it's, well, if you didn't have kids, <laughs> oh shit, there's a meteor coming towards the earth. Well, James, if you didn't have kids, that wouldn't fall. <laughs> God, I really can't stand cauliflower. If you didn't have fucking 20 children, you'd be alright, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, Callum. Callum he makes it again. such a good point, though, because, yeah, the amount of people that go like, well, you can't drive. How do you get around if you can't drive? Yeah, oh, I bet they look at like pathetic. Yeah, I was like, for a start, I've got a woman that drives. She can do it for me. <clears throat> didn't throw anything at me, wicked. Um... <laughs> I don't think she heard me. I'm safe. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, but like you say, if you can't cook, like, okay, don't matter. 
ordering. Who gives a fuck? I can't. I mean, I can, but I'm not like fucking Ainsley Harriet. Like, la, 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 la. I like throwing like yeah, and it's like throwing fish in the end and catching it in something else. I'm like la 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 season. I'm just like yeah, I have no idea. But like oven on in the tray it goes thirty minutes. Bing. Job done. Bing. No. That's probably why people don't get judged for not being able to cook because it's so easy to just eat something just bang in the oven or a microwave meal or fucking whatever it is. I don't think you can see that sentence on then. Like, it's just so easy to eat. <laughs> <laughs> you pause and I was like, well, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, just put in Alan. face and go nom nom nom. Easy. Beautiful. We love, we love the treatures every single week. They are just <laughs> such glorious fun. The only problem is I have to follow it and they're always great. Time Cops Journal. And welcome to another edition of Tom's Journal. So Jamie, what what is a harmless prank to play on your friends? Ooh. Hmm. A harmless prank. After they leave your place, text them, you forgot your phone here. <laughs> bonus point. Bonus point. If you take a picture of their phone on your kitchen table before they leave and send it with a text. <laughs> that is fucking brilliant. That is absolutely... Gonna look at, oh, shit, I've left my phone. <laughs> and I would probably fall for that because I'm that much of an idiot. There's I mean, no, I'm not no going to... I'll wait till we finish recording and I'll agree with you. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I could tell by the look where you looked at me as soon as I said it, you were like, well, I was about to say that. I'm only joking, dude. I'm only messing with you. <laughs> the only other issue I have, though, is I don't think Care Bears get enough street cred for shaving their stomachs and tattooing them with happy things. <laughs> I've been enough. I was watching Care Bears this week. Well, Olivia was. I wasn't. Oh, hey. Okay. <laughs> I did just I did sit down and go, I fancy watching some Care Bears. Mind you, to be honest with you, with you, I wouldn't put it past your ear. I'd be like, yeah, that's fair. I, I could believe it, do you know what I mean? I watched four episodes of Power Rangers before we came on today, so yeah, that's fair. <laughs> there we are. There we are. <laughs> could you imagine, though, if they didn't literally just sat there in Care Bear Tattoo Studio? Give me a fucking sun and a rainbow. Put a heart on there, bitch. <laughs> um... This, re- this I thoroughly enjoyed. When you get hired to do a job, but you're completely unqualified, so you just kind of wing it. All right? Here are six animal facts that were written by said person. Oh, God. If I could zoom in, that'd be great, because I can hardly see them. Never trust a bear. They are very sneaky. If you don't see our bear, it's in, in its pen, it means he's escaped. Oh my God, he's right behind you. Don't turn around, just run. <laughs> I hope my microphone picked the that up. The person who wrote that is an absolute legend. Okay, now I'm on to owls. Oh God. All barn owls think that one line the Friends theme song is, I will be there for you. Don't tell them the truth. It would devastate them. <laughs> Are you ready for our next animal? Oh yes. Penguins appear to have tuxedos because they are slowly evolving into 1920s business tycoons. In 30 years, they'll have monocles. In 60 years, disdain for the poor. <laughs> I, just, I really want to see a penguin with a monocle now. That just sounds incredible. <laughs> Jamie, we've got three more. Don't pick your favourite oh just God. yet. <laughs> Ducklings. If you give a tiny trombone to 76 <laughs> ducklings, they will lead the most adorable parade you have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> How to kill Jamie Westwood slowly. <laughs> Apparently so. There's still two left. Oh God. Are you ready for the next one? <laughs> Somehow. Koalas! America's first president, George Washington, was actually nine koalas stacked on top of each other. (laughs) Is that where I saw that going? Are you ready for the final one? Hopefully. 
<laughs> Meerkats. Oh, fuck. Meerkats can control electronics with their minds. If your cell phone rings, do not answer it. <laughs> it's one of our meerkats asking for you for you to help. It's escaped, and they are very persuasive. Are all these written by the same person? Yes. I need them on the show. I don't, I don't know who they are. I don't know who wrote it. It was just, <laughs> I just saw the post and found it fucking amazing. Oh, that person is an absolute hero and maybe the reason I don't make it past the end of the day. Ow, but... <laughs> it's a fucking penguin one that got me. <laughs> 60 years I'll have a disdain for the poor. <laughs> Jamie Westwood, <clears throat> at least you are not this kid. Another day, with my dad forgetting that our Amazon accounts are linked. Notification, Alexa, here's your reminder. Have, have sex with my wife. Oh, God. <laughs> There's so much to unpack here. <laughs> Who sets a reminder for that? <laughs> it's my first question. Again, it's definitely something I could see you doing in your older age. Like, oh, Alexa. Oh, Oh, I've got an appointment, mustn't miss that one. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> that poor fucking kid. I know. <laughs> oh, I'd have to put things on there just to get my own back, just to have revenge and really fucking mess with the dad then. <laughs> Tell Henry dad's coming in five minutes. <laughs> Stop banging mum, he's over. He's over. He's over. <laughs> Like his best friend or something. <laughs> Every documentary ever about serial killers. He was alone. He had no friends. No lover. He spent all his time alone in his house. Me. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's always a worry when you watch those sort of programs. You're like, shit, that's me. Fuck. <laughs> What am I going to do now? Uh... <laughs> right, I'll give you two more and we'll move on to our magnificent guest of the week. Conversation between your child and yourself, because I can't relate to this. So, My kid, I feel like you're always making up the rules and stuff. You, like what? Your kid, like... If I don't clean my room, a portal will open and take me to another dimension. You. Well, that's what happened to your older brother, my <laughs> kid. What older brother? You. Exactly. I'm going to try that. I'm trying that. <laughs> I'm going to see how badly I can fuck with her head now. I'm going to try that. Oh, did she only fucking... She's yeah, six in... The other, two, the other three are too old. They'd understand. They'd see right through my lies. But her, I could, I could trick her with this one. Mold her, make her yours. Mess with the tiny mind. <laughs> and finally, Jamie, a coffee shop without a bathroom should be illegal. You are selling doo doo juice. Do not play <laughs> these fucking dangerous games with me, please. <laughs> juice. I remember going to Costa Coffee once and like wanted to use a toilet. And I'm like, oh, you need to go to the till to get the key. I was like, Really? Do you mean that yeah, till with a queue that's a mile long of people asking for very posh words for coffee? Seriously, I need to piss, woman. So yeah, people are having doo-doo juice. They, they, they're they not going to be able to hold on for that long. <laughs> Fucking doo -doo nope. Juice. And that <laughs> was another edition of Tom's Journal. Another fantastic journal, my friend. Oh, that penguin Wait one's going to go with me forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you it, mate. I'll send it to you. Can have it Next forever. time at the zoo, I'll be like, Fucking on to you, mate. <laughs> your, your tiny outfits. But shall we? Uh, shall we introduce the piece of resistance for this week? Definitely should. Welcome to the Chronicles of Joe Rooney. Yeah, tell him that's fine. I don't care what he does. It's not the boss of me. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm going. Tell him I'm going. I'll see you, Dougal. Oh, this is absolutely fantastic. Joe Rooney is an actor and comedian all the way 
from Ireland. You will most notably know him as Father Damo in hit Channel 4 comedy series, Father Ted. But this man does it all. He's got an incredible stand-up career. He's an incredible actor. He's going to be in the upcoming movie, Dublin Crust, which Tom was very fortunate to see. You'll probably recognise Joe's face as well from our Dublin Crust vlog because Tom got to speak to him there as well. This conversation's hilarious. Like, Joe is so much fun. And he doesn't do these very often, by all accounts, so it means the absolute world to us that he actually sat down and spoke to us. Yes, this is so funny. So much fun. I can't stress it enough, Jamie, is spot on. Joe, we're really sorry that we interrupted your soup, so do yes. massively apologise for that. Uh, Jamie! Yes, sir? Any more words before we crack on? Just a massive thank you to Joe, as I said. I really appreciate you taking time out and doing this, Ben. And yeah, for putting your soup on hold for us. It means the world. Absolutely. Everybody go check out Joe's son's band, Modern Love, as well. Ruin Your Night is an absolute tune. Ladies and gentlemen... Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, interviewing this week, it's Joe Rooney. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, today we bring you another wonderful and hilarious guest. Today's guest is a musician, stand-up comic and actor who has hosted kids television, brought to life one of the most iconic characters in Ireland's most iconic shows. And that's from starring in one episode. That's how you make an impression. (laughs) <laughs> He's a man who once said in an interview, if he won the lottery, he'd buy a castle and paint it pink. Today's guest can be seen on tour with his show, A Celebration of Father Ted, and portraying the role of Terence in the upcoming movie, Dublin Crust. Ladies and gentlemen, we encourage you to ask yourself the question, Oasis or Blur? Because these are the chronicles of Joe Rooney. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> All right. Joe, Thank why, you. Why would you want... Why do you want to paint a castle pink? Like, why would you? Why? <laughs> uh, well, I think most castles you would imagine would be pink if they were properly painted. <laughs> <don't> know, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it's a big job. Yeah, I put understand. Some thought into it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? If people actually put some thought into it, you know, start getting the Dulux <laughs> chart out. Be like, I want my castle to be green. I want for green on the outside. I want for orange walls. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, like, obviously, a big job. It's a lot of paint, and I understand why people who have castles don't put that effort in. But uh, if I definitely would, yeah, I, I'd go for it. Yeah, and then you could then you could say, oh, we're, we're, we're. give people directions. It's pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As long as yeah. it's in the vicinity, yeah? As long as it's yeah. around the castle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you're about a mile away, you'll see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd love that mm. if you just tried to incorporate it somehow regardless. You'd be like, so you want to take a left down there, go all the way down the motorway, so you should see a pink castle, come back on yourself, it's just around the corner of the <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. If you've seen the pink castle, you're going the wrong direction. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. You've gone too far. Yeah. Um, Joe, oh. how was uh, how was your pandemic season? How was the last couple of years been for you? Oh, brilliant! I really liked the pandemic. Um, I was happy <laughs> enough to uh, to be at home and getting the uh, payment, and I was reading books and hanging out. I was sharing a place here with my son at the time. Uh, don't think he was too happy with that, but but I commandeered <laughs> the living room apparently uh but um it probably was uh i mean i didn't miss go doing live gigs but at the same time when i went back to doing live gigs i realized i loved doing live gigs but i did like having a break was fine it was fine with me um i didn't like doing online gigs to be honest i thought they were awful so i guess i realized that you know it's not really about when you're doing stand up, it's not just about your material or um, it's not just about you. 50% of it is the audience as well. So it's kind of a, mm. yeah, it's a, I don't know what you call it. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it's, a, it's part, the audience make a show, you know? So, yeah. I can imagine trying to do an online show on Zoom and you, you deliver something absolutely spectacular, but if there's like delay or whatever, so people just sat there staring for a while, and you're like, was that, was, was that, that was, that was great, and everyone just goes, 
<laughs> and then starts like laughing, but it's like delayed by like 10 seconds. So yes, yeah, delayed by 10 seconds, or you just hear somebody dropped a, a saucepan and their photo comes up. <laughs> <laughs> their feed comes up on your, yeah, it's it was really odd. I remember at one point I was doing a show. It well, it was like a corporate gig, but at one point the screen uh, came up. It was just a lady uh, feeding her baby at a kitchen table, and that kind of puts you off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's nothing to do with the fact that it's a lady kid feeding her baby, but she was obviously told to log on, and this is a corp. This is an event for the company. You should really be there, but. Um, she was far more interested in her own child than what I was doing. But, you know, so that, 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 was, that was entertainment in lockdown for you. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm glad, kind of glad it's over. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> so, Joe, take us back to the days of young Master Rooney. What did young Joe want to be when he was growing up? Was it always the world of entertainment for you or was it something completely different? Um, I wasn't, uh, I was into music and, um, I mean, this is the seventies I'm talking about maybe the end of the glam for, for when I was really, really, really young, it was the glam. Uh, so I, but I didn't think I, you know, I, I couldn't imagine myself being, uh, being in the same kind of, uh, entertainment world as, T-Rex or whoever I was looking at at the time. But uh, I guess when the punk thing happened, there was an idea that anybody could get into show business. Like mm. you could, you know, and it is that I was in a band in school and then I was in another band later. So that was a gradual kind of realisation that, yeah, I can be on stage. I can be on stage. And then when the band broke up, I was 25 and it was a friend of mine, Paul Tyler, who was really into comedy and we decided to do a double act. So it, it was a very gradual. So I say when I was young, I had that idea that I'd be like in what they call show business. But gradually, yeah, I I accepted that that was a possibility. More than anything like that. Yeah. Because in the 80s, you were in a band called Guernica, was it? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that Yeah, right Guernica, all. yeah. Named after a Picasso painting. Uh, I didn't come up with that name, but... Um, it was quite serious, like kind of started off kind of a very Joy Division y uh, New Order sound, then moved into rockabilly. So I think we had actually uh, invented our own genre, which was like shoegazing rockabilly. So okay, well, I found a couple of songs on YouTube and I was going to say, like, how would you describe that music? Because I could not think of a way to describe it. Oh, really? Yeah, you couldn't. Yeah, because there was a mixture of, yeah. kind of synth uh, at uh, at times synthy and then at times guitar uh, kind of rockabilly ish. Not rockabilly, no, I don't know, whatever rock, country rock, rockabilly, whatever. Um, but uh, anyway, it eventually found out that after uh, recording an album, the guitarist was two timing us with another band, <gasps> and uh, it it broke up. And at the age of twenty five, I. So I'm too old to start another band. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, that even you realise that the look on your face on, I was only 25, I think easily could have started another band. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I felt really old at 25 for some reason. Yeah. Um, much older than I do now, I think. Yeah. So uh, so then, yeah, the, the comedy thing started. But it wasn't like stand-up. I was just doing... Um, a double, a kind of very physical. Well, well, you, there was two of us. We were wearing wigs. We did stupid songs, and we didn't really know where you should perform comedy. So we were asking bands if we could open for them and things like that. And uh, that's our first gig. Or going to the art college in Dublin, asking if we could perform there, and that's what we did. Our private parties, even, and eventually we found out there was a comedy club in Dublin, and it was called a Cellar, and that's where. Everybody from Ardla Hanlon to Dylan Moran started. Yeah. I was going to say, because obviously, you know, you've got this well known career in comedy. Were you a big comedy fan growing up, or was it something you just sort of fell into? Uh, I was into uh, film comedy, yeah. Not so much stand up, actually. Was there any good stand up? I don't know, but. Uh... 
um, I was really into Steve Martin and um, the early Steve Martin albums or albums. Uh, yeah, the live album that he did and uh, and his films as well. Uh, um, but but it, it was all sketch stuff, uh, you know, um, not, not so much. I don't know when stand ups became cool, because to me, when I was growing up, stand up was very cabaret, you know. And uh, then I guess it, it it was kind of when the young ones started and stuff like that. Um, I would have seen that there was a different side to stand up. But when I started doing stand up, I didn't even know how to do it. No one of us knew how to do it. We we're all kind of going, "What? What do you do? Do you talk about yourself?" I mean, you kind of do you talk about your real life? You know, it was it wasn't like we knew how to do it. And I'm talking about. People like Ardla Hanlon as well, because we all started off um, the same time. It, there was kind of just finding out how to do it, um, because we didn't really have that, didn't have that culture here in Ireland of of stand up. I don't think. Yeah, it's uh, interesting though, but it wasn't the stand up that I was looking at when I started watching comedy. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I've, I've always admired people who do stand up even sketch stand up stuff like you've got to have a big old pair of balls to get up on stage in front of a crowd full of people and try and make them laugh but were you always yeah. like an outgoing person like here I am look at me or was it like soon no. as sort of come out of your shell no no I was really shy really quiet it was a very gradual thing I'm glad I was in the band first because the band was you were there with four people with loud instruments so if people weren't listening didn't matter you know and then mm. th then doing the double act you and being characters was another kind of uh, barrier between you and the audience and eventually I did stand up but stand up is the most naked you can be on stage like if you if people don't laugh it's horrible and when you start out, when you start off uh, one in five maybe gigs are deaths unbelievable deaths and when you're starting out it's so I didn't have, no, I used to, I was actually for the first five years of doing stand up really nervous before I went on every single night. I was like, I would be like, I don't have to do this. I could just go home. <laughs> 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 and then, but I never didn't go on. You know, I never didn't go on. I just kept forcing myself to do it. And, uh, and eventually all that nerves kind of is gone you know and you feel it and you look like the most confident and relaxed person on stage but that took me a long time now i'm not saying that's for everybody because i know i know guys and uh, uh, comedians i should say that uh just seem to have that confidence straight up but that wasn't me that wasn't me for sure yeah perfect so imagine having shows where obviously it's bombed for whatever reason didn't put you off because obviously that would i mean for me personally if i went there i was like oh yeah I like did whatever, but you know, you know, everyone just went like just didn't say anything, whatever. That'd be like, no, that's it. Do you know what? I'm, I'm not gonna do that ever again. I think I'll just go and work from home, never actually reach the sunshine, <laughs> never smell the air ever again. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just have one, but you have one really amazing gig that keeps you going for a few weeks, a few months, even. You go, well, if, if it can happen again, surely that can happen again. And uh, and uh, yeah, it does, I suppose. Um, but uh, I, I'm amazed that I did keep going. So sometimes, because I, you travel the length and breadth of the country to do seven minutes, and if that seven minutes doesn't go well, you're like, what the? F what am I doing? What am I doing? Like, <laughs> it's a good point. I never really thought about that. You're traveling all this time, a lot longer than seven minutes to perform for, like you say, seven minutes. It shows then, dedication to it, really, really does. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's really hard. To start. Starting off on uh, comedy is the worst because you get the worst gigs. You're doing the worst gigs in the worst venues, and you're only and you're just starting out because, uh, <laughs> but because as you get, you know, more renowned, you're getting nicer venues and not an audience who are there to see you, and so so it's a hell of a lot easier. So it's just the first year or two is the worry. If you can get through that, you're probably okay. You know, you're probably okay. But at the same time, I actually did what made me nervous again was doing larger audiences. So you start off doing little bars and everything and you can see everybody in the audience. Then you go into a theater where they're all sitting in lines and 
I always felt, you know, in a pub, you can laugh with your mates. You can look at them and go, ha, la, la, la. And it's not like that in the theatre. They've got to laugh out at you. <laughs> and I always yeah. find it it's, it's, takes longer to, to uh, warm up an audience when you're in a theatre. And also, you might not be able to see the audience. I remember the first time I went on stage and I went, oh, my God, all I'm seeing is lights I, and, dark, and a darkness out there. I can hear laughter. But you can't see anybody. It's really disconcerting. I'm used to it now. You just kind of look, pretend you're looking at someone in, <laughs> in their eyes. But, uh, yeah, so all those kind of things kind of, yeah, make you a bit nervous. As, as you go up as well, you go to another level, you go, oh, sh- this is this is tough. But, yeah, well, that's life, you know. That's why comedians always pick on people in the front row, because they can't see anyone past the front row. They can't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's really odd, actually, going back and forth between... I remember doing, like, um, a tour with this guy. He's really big in Ireland, but I was opening for him. And I was doing it for about a year or two. And uh, big, big venues. And uh, and then going back to a club. Now, the thing about a big venue is the laughter lasts longer. So you've got an extra 30 seconds to even think of the next thing you're going to say. So you, you look like a genius, like you're really thinking on the spot you but you've actually got a lot of time and then you go back to a club and you have that kind of timing that where you tell a you hit a punchline and you think you've got loads of time so you start speaking again and you go oh no shit there's only there's only 30 people here they're not going to laugh for for a minute you know (laughs) so yeah it's really odd going back and forth between one big venues and small venues yeah I was watching a few clips of your stand-up on, online, and one thing that stood out to me is the fact that Ireland is brought up a hell of a lot. Like, what is it about Ireland that just lends itself so well to comedy? It's, it's sort of like its own charm and got its own character. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I guess it's the uh, for me, it's kind of this bizarre upbringing in, uh, in a very strict Catholic Ireland, which doesn't really exist now. But I mean. Uh, that kind of life. I mean, that's Father Ted is just is not, you know, it isn't insane and it's mad and it's it's crazy, but a lot of it is true as well. I mean, so I guess that you know, go on, go on, go on, go on. That happened. That used to happen. Like if you if you went to someone's house and you they go, do you want a cup of tea? And you go, no, I'm grand. I go on. You'll have a cup of tea. No, no, I'm fine. Go on, come on. And that that happens. That happens. And and uh, a, lot, a lot of that stuff and the, these weird priests, weird priests that were like, I don't know, like every family, your mother would be really proud if you became a priest. So kind of maybe, maybe it was an honourable thing for the family to have a priest. But there were these people who were just should not have been priests. And they're just <laughs> and they're a little bit insane, you know, and they're. So, I mean, you just know that that life did happen and it lends itself to comedy, I guess. I mean, some kind of psychotic, the whole country was psychotic, I think, for a while. (laughs) (laughs) What you're you're saying is, Joe, Father Ted is real life. That's not a sitcom, that's a real thing. It is a real. There's something real about it. Like we had, like you got Father Stone, the guy, the fellow who visits and sits there and says nothing. There was a neighbor. We had a neighbor who did that. He call around. He goes, "Your father in." He go, "Yeah, come on in." And then he just sit there and say nothing. And you don't know why. Why did he call around? <laughs> I guess he was just lonely, and uh, he just wanted to watch our television instead of his own. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it is weird. I think that Ireland was a bit screwed up, though. But, but a post-colonial and then and then being under the thumb of the Catholic Church, there was a certain men. The whole country was like a mental institution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, <sighs> Just going back to stand up really quickly. I did really enjoy the rock star nursery rhymes. I'm gonna have to say, oh, right. Morrissey and Johnny Cash. Just, just, I had to watch it a few times because I enjoyed it so much. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that really, yeah, that really goes down well. I mean, I like doing those. I'm adding a few more now as well, like Elvis and um, 
Uh, maybe talking heads, I'm thinking Dune and uh, Bob Dylan. I mean, everyone does Bob Dylan, but shit, you know, I'll, I'll do Bob Dylan. But most of the people I impersonate are dead, though. So I have to, ex- just to a younger audience, I, go, I have to explain <laughs> who they are. <laughs> I'll need a bow. I was just going to mention that I was going to say, like, people listening to this need to go find that Rockstar Nursery Rhymes music video on your YouTube channel because it is fantastic. It's so good. But where, like, where do you get the inspiration for your jokes and your stand up? Uh, well, I kind of like um, from it is a bit of real life, but exaggeration and stuff. And then whatever is uh, coming up in the uh, in um, just generally in culturally what's coming up i guess gender issue or whatever it's in your head and you just start writing down i mean recently i started getting up and writing for an hour and and those things are in your head so you just write and i mean like most of it's not going to be that funny but you'll find a little few nuggets so it is kind of what is is happening at the moment in culture as well and issues that people get embarrassed about and how people deal with for example you know we don't know how to deal now with pronouns and or you make mistakes and you, you say the wrong pronoun you're going oh i'm so sorry i'm so sorry um like i have a friend who is is transitioning and I, i'm sure i'm going to say the wrong pronoun and he's okay with that he's going look that's okay because i do the same myself so um these kind of things that are embarrassing moments in life they're the things that and when i had kids that was all about that struggle, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah. Have you ever, have you ever had moments of like, you're, I don't know, you're not so much to sleep but nodding off or in the shower or anything, you, you think of something immediately and go, shit, I need to write it down. Uh, fuck. And it's like, is there any moments like that? Do you ever have like, a, like, you think of really funny things at the most inappropriate times? <laughs> I think so. I think, well, yeah, 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 yeah. It's usually now you've got a phone and you can record. It's usually the musical stuff. Because I just sing nonsense in the, as many people might do in the shower or just around the house. And some sometimes I go, oh, that's quite funny. Um, and uh, um, I would have to record. Yeah, sometimes I'm walking there. Yeah, I'd have to pull it in, walk down the street, just pull into a, a, a doorway and say something into my phone. Now, it may not be funny, but at, the, at that time, I think it's funny. <laughs> And then I might listen back and go, what the, that's, that's, that's terrible, you know, but yeah, does happen, does happen at the, at the most in, inopportune times, um, mm. but may not always be funny. You wake up in the middle of the night and with an idea, write, write it down, go, that's amazing. Then, and then you, and then you go back to sleep, wake up in the morning and you, you look at your notebook and it says, uh, I don't know, sledgehammer, uh, elephant or something and it doesn't make any sense <laughs> well it made us laugh <laughs> <laughs> you, you've performed stand-up like all over the world and i can only imagine the first mm. time you stood up on a stage for the first time you couldn't have been expecting to be playing like all these different countries throughout your career no that is pretty cool. I mean, uh, I've got to go to Moscow. I played in Moscow and, uh, you know, China and uh, all over America. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. That's amazing. I mean, mostly it is to, a lot of it is to expats, say China, Hong Kong, Dubai is to expats. Around Europe, then you're playing to Europeans, but they have good English and stuff. And they understand. You know what they don't understand? Like, if you're doing gigs in Europe and... and um, they don't, you, you talk about those nursery rhymes, David Bowie and Johnny Cash doing nursery yeah. rhymes, but they don't have those nursery rhymes. So they don't, that's just, that's completely gone for them. But, oh. but only uh, place, America, people from India know those nursery rhymes and obviously English and Irish people. But anyway, uh, but in Moscow, I played to Muscovites and they had a translator actually. And some people had headphones on and they were laughing though. So that translator was either really good or doing his own stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> and now's my time to shine. Everyone's going to think it's him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was surprised the one thing that didn't work in Moscow, they're very prudish about sexual stuff. They don't like that stuff. They didn't mind 
uh, me. The, oh, actually, there's a, I was talking to some people after, some girls after the show, and there's a guy on before me did some sexual stuff, and it died in his ass. I did a bit, and it went okay. And they were like, it, it was okay when you did it because you are older, and we don't imagine you doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. There's some horrific videos in Russia I've seen of like uh, with with uh, gay, gay couples, homosexual couples like holding hands, and these Russians just, like smash straight into them and put them against walls and stuff like that. It's absolutely disgusting. Mental, yeah, n- mental country. Yeah, it is like uh, uh, I, I I was I was over there when they invaded uh, uh, Crimea, and I was talking to these younger people, and they were like, I was going, that's pretty bad, isn't it? You know, and they were like. Oh, no, no. Uh, they were like very dismissive of us, uh, saying, no, it's not a real country, uh, you know. And um, I started my next gig and it didn't go well, but I started my next gig. I said, yeah, you know, it's right now. You've invaded, uh, you've ta- you've annexed Crimea. I mean, it's not really a real country, you know. And I'm, <laughs> I hope when I go home, uh, England have uh, taken Ireland back because we're not a real country. And, uh, uh, you know, I just, you know, what are we doing? But, <laughs> but um, it didn't go down very well. It didn't go down. I'm surprised. Yeah. I'm surprised so, you were lynched. <laughs> yeah, the rest, uh, unfortunately, I did it at the top of my set. So the rest of the set was well. Uh, <laughs> Another thing that didn't work, actually, uh, I say, I did it to do material. This is where architecture can ruin your act. Uh, I did a uh, material about how if you have an argument with your wife, like don't when she, just leave it like and when she's washing her teeth, don't go for a piss beside her. You know, it's uh, there was more to it than that. But anyway, it didn't get a laugh. And it was turned out because in Russia, the toilet is not in the bathroom. So you couldn't have done that. You couldn't go for a piss beside someone washing their teeth. The, the actual the toilet bowl is in its own room. So, yeah. So you say, you know, you 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 don't realize how architecture can ruin a joke. <laughs> I was going to say, like, when you're playing these foreign countries, how does the Irish material go over? Do people get it, or do you just abandon it for foreign shows? No, I think like a lot of my material is it's not. Um, I don't know what the material I'm doing now. Anyway, it could be about my Irish upbringing, but it's still. It's still universal in the fact that I will talk about the mother is very passive aggressive and she'll go, you know, I used to say, can I go to the disco on Friday, the teenage disco? And she'd be like, ah, she'll go on out and enjoy herself. Sure, someone in this house might as well enjoy themselves. It won't be me anyway. And that kind of passive aggressive mother. I still, I think the Jewish mother is like that. I think the, you know, the Arabic mother is like that. That kind of mother that's just doesn't, makes you feel guilty, you know, all the time. Uh, so, <laughs> certain, you know, certain things are universal, even though they're particular, but they're also universal, you know. <laughs> um, you've, you've incorporated your comedy and your music as now as one. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed a music video by Men to Be. Um, like be in my bubble is, is an absolute smash hit. And I'm, so when yeah. when are, when are meant to be touring? <laughs> uh, I don't know if we can get us all together in the same room, but uh, you know we've fallen out. But I I'd love the yeah, oh, okay, song. Written, uh, <laughs> you know the way bands are, musical differences and all that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I I wrote that with. Uh, uh, my son helped me write that. My son is in a band called Modern Love, who sold out their first show in America in New York two nights ago. Did a sold out show in New York, That's right. and right. and uh, he uh, he did the production. I wrote the song on a guitar, like uh, three, four chords or whatever. But um, yeah, I like that song. Be in my bubble. Yeah, it's, it's kind of time. Obviously, they, nobody's in a bubble anymore, so it, it doesn't really work. But it worked at the time. Um, just in reference to uh, your son's band, Modern Love, uh, the song, Ru- because I think you shared Ruin Your Night on your Instagram story, so I checked it out, and it's fucking it's sensational, and congratulations to him for selling out New York. That's incredible. Yeah, no, amazing. They're, they're on their way to Chicago now to do another sellout show. So they're doing great. Thanks very much, yeah. 
Um, so we mentioned the YouTube channel, uh, which obviously is at Freezer Joe. And during the lockdown, um, the workout video was absolutely incredible. So I'm definitely I'll put that into my routine now in the morning. Um, <laughs> and the <laughs> living with Joe episodes were also sensational. But what really stood out to me was the cover of Last Christmas. Oh, yeah, it's such a beautiful, uh, beautiful message. Is that, can I say, that last Christmas you gave me... What? Yeah, go for it. It was the last Christmas he gave me the clap, the, was it? Yeah, the, yes. <laughs> I gave so you the clap. The very next day, you gave it to Ray. Ray, anyway. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, beautiful, beautiful, you know. Uh, yeah. There was one actual video I did that was taken down. Can you believe this? I did this kind of Northern English bloke who was talking about bananas being, it's bananas that are giving us COVID. And it was like, uh, bloody bananas. And it was all the spec conspiracy, how they switched the banana. They changed. There used to be a different banana, and they changed it. And that was taken down. YouTube took it down. Unbelievable. Bastards. Bastards. It, it, it got the most interaction as well. People took, people thought that was real. People thought I was real. Like, it, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Oh if they believe 5G is going to fuck or Bill Gates is going to impart a chip, I'm not surprised they, they believed you. But yeah, I mean, there's, not... all, there's I mean, um, Mar 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 what's it called? Marjorie Taylor Greene in America said that the California fires were, were started by lasers that Jewish people were firing at oh. the uh, trees. And she is, in, she is in Congress in America. She's like, I mean, so... It's quite easily the banana thing could have been. It's just as believable as that, you know. So yeah, it. <laughs> it's crazy to think like three years ago, people were holding cutlery against their arm. You know, like, look, it's magnetic. We're fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, live in a world full of fucking idiots. <laughs> it's it's not. Yeah, I know what people are believing. <laughs> Yeah, there you go, bananas. Um, I might bring that back then. I must bring that back. I can't take it out a second time, surely. What's that again? Just keep rehashing it, just keep rehashing it, keep redoing it, and see how many times I'll take it down. See how many times, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's no arguing with it's probably a bot anyway, but there's no arguing, there's no one to talk to about my banana thing. So I suppose we'd better talk about it, otherwise fans are not going to be happy with us. Father Ted, in one episode you managed to create an iconic character that fans of the show just fucking love to this day. When I told people you were coming on, I had tons of people going, that's one of my favourite ever episodes. So, but what 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 led to your journey to Craggy Island? How did that start for you? Um, I did know the writers. I... I, I uh... Graham and Arthur had a, a, a flat in Kilburn in London. And uh, when I was going over to London, like I would fly over to do, as I said, seven or eight minute spots, 10 minute spots. Um, they offered to put me up if I was looking for a place to stay. So I stayed there and um, I got to know them quite well that, that they were they were obsessed with sitcoms. And they'd written a, a couple of things. They'd written a thing called Paris uh, for... Oh, kind of that comedian from uh, Liverpool. Well, I can't remember his name, but um, they used to sit and watch uh, uh, One Foot in the Grave a lot. They watched that a lot. And uh, Seinfeld. They watched both of them a lot. And they were really obsessed with the idea of uh, how to write a sitcom, you know, and how to write comedy. And... And then they told me that they'd written something about three priests, I, which I believe that uh, Father Ted started off as a mock documentary, a one hour mock documentary about a priest called Father Ted. And was somebody in Channel 4 said, this could be a sitcom. And then they obviously obsessed with the the uh, idea of writing a good sitcom and they watched lots of stuff and then they wrote this. Um, but I was a fan of it then. I went to see a couple of them being in, I was in the audience for, for one of them. Mm -hmm. In, in the first season um, I was a fan of it 
I did a thing then called the Harry Bowsies, was an Irish kind of trad band, parody of a trad band. And I did play a character in that, which maybe was a bit like Father Damo. Um, so I got a call then from one of the, from Graham actually to, and he said, there's a, there's a part we want you to audition for. So the, the casting agent will be in touch. And the casting agent wasn't in touch. And then he called again and he go, are you not going to audition? I said, nobody's called me. And he said, okay, sorry. I'll, 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 uh, I'll find out what happened. And then eventually I got it. I got the audition, but yeah, I get the feeling that maybe they had me in mind for that part because I know that they really cast to type and they obviously saw that in me but i'd say michael redmond played father stone he's very like that patrick mcdonald played owen mclove i think he's perfect for that he's very like that character um i would have said that ard lahanlan's stand-up was similar enough to Dougal, uh kind of an innocence about him and um but i did audition for the part and it's just amazing i was so happy that i got it yeah it's amazing. But what what is it about? Do you think about Father Damo that appealed to so many people? Because, like I said, one episode and people love that character. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, obviously, I love that character as well. Like, I just love the uh, kind of idiotic rebelliousness that he has. That kind of young fella that I may have been myself. Well, you just think you're so cool. <laughs> you just think you're so cool, and the way he flicks a cigarette. I think, you know, he is so cool and he knows that, you know, because he's got his ear pierced and stole a whistle. Like, I just love that idea of just thinking you're so cool, but, you know, you're not that cool. But, I mean, in his world, he's the coolest thing on earth. Um, and just that, I, and also that just grumpiness of a teenager. I love that grumpiness. Like, even my son, I didn't love it when it was my son, but I met, he go, he's still a bit like that. Just that. What are you asking me questions for? You just go, how was your day? Oh my god, you know that kind of thing. Um I just that's what I love about him, yeah. And 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 uh, and then it captured the whole um moment in time when uh Oasis and Blur were big rivals and it was that's all that was the question of the day, you know. <laughs> <He didn't care laughs> Oasis and Blur. And of course he'd like Oasis, you know, because he's like a Liam Gallagher type character, you know. It's the mannerisms that always got me. Like the shoulders, Oasis or Blur. It's like, it's, I absolutely yeah. loved it. It's so yeah. good. <laughs> it's Blur, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oasis or Blur. But, you know, what's great about the character, what's great about the interaction with Do uh, Dougal is that Dougal's reaction to everything is amazing. When Father Damo flicks a cigarette, like Dougal's like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> Oh, and he says, I don't care. Tell him to fuck off. Dougal is so impressed. He's so impressed by everything. It's amazing. And then when he comes back in, trying to walk like a minute. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Artless, Artless, so good. I mean, so good visually. The, the stuff he does with his face is amazing. Um, oh, oh, yeah, that's Art really makes that character. He's amazing. Brilliant. Were there ever plans for Damo to come back for another episode, or was it? Like, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, obviously, when that episode went out, people were always saying, "Oh, he's definitely going to come back." You know, like Graham Norton's character came back, but uh, I don't know. Don't know if there was plans. I'm actually in the airplane episode. I'm in sitting in the airplane, but I don't say anything. The father Damo was. He's sitting there, uh, but um, maybe they just couldn't figure it. Figure it they could develop the character it would just be the same thing again you know but yeah. i don't know i i heard that they had difficulty writing that episode that the, the, the old gray whistle theft that um they weren't sure if it was going to work but i think it's amazing it's full of little moments like the picnic scene and uh it's kind of almost little sketches mm. That episode has got little sketches like the picnic scene and the old lady coming up to Father Ted going, it'll be like boys in the hood. Um, so <laughs> in that sense, it's an interesting episode that it's kind of almost like little sketches thrown together. Oh, 
was it almost like they didn't want too much of a good thing? It almost didn't want didn't want to like spoil your character in a way because it was so successful. It's almost yeah. like maybe we should just leave it as it is because you know you don't want to give too much of it and then it not be the same as it was when you first came in. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there could have been that. I often wondered if, if uh, I don't know why I was brought up to the flight to terror that Father Day. De- I think Father Demo would have been a great if he just went, this is stupid, and just jumped out of the plane. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be the end of Father Demo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a way to go as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would have loved that. Just that one line. Because he, he just wouldn't be able to ha- just think it was stupid. <laughs> and then Arnold would obviously have sold that beautifully. So it's like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> Maybe I should follow. He's going to say, if he gets up to go do it himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. And Father Ted would be like, no, do it, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Oh. Phenomenal. But obviously you've incorporated, you've incorporated into your stand up because obviously recently you just toured um, with the Celebration Tour as Father Demo. Um, you actually played the Cheltenham Town Hall recently as well, which is uh, where we we literally used to live. So that was the kind of mental that you came over for a few for a few shows in uh, in England and stuff. But oh, yeah, was, well, was Sorry, Carol. I'm doing, lots, I'm doing quite, a, quite a few in England. Um, uh, this Friday I'm in um, Bishop Auckland. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know where that is? <laughs> no one uh, <laughs> Yeah, I look, anyway, I don't know. I'm down in, uh, I don't know, Dunstable and I'm in Northampton and Peterborough and all. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all over. I mean, then, then it's going to stop until the autumn again. But yeah, um, it's mostly in the UK, actually. I, I've only recently done a few in Ireland. Yeah. And okay. I I will do Northern Ireland a lot more. I, they love they love Father Ted in Northern Ireland. They go nuts for it as well, and Scotland as well. I think possibly the I don't know whether it is that relevance of the the uh, conflict or whatever. They just like to laugh at religion or something. I don't know, but they really love it. Yeah. So has it gone down quite well at all so far? Yeah, it's really good. It's developing as it goes. So, so I've brought in a costume change now. And I, I uh, second half, I'm in that blue sparkly jacket that they have for Song for Europe. You know, uh, I, I bring in a bit of a Euro, a Euro thing. I have my own song as well. Um, and then the uh, lovely girls come getting people up on stage a lot more. So, I uh, for various reasons, obviously a lovely girl competition, a dancing priest competition, um, but. I have them people coming up playing kazoos, uh, backing me in on kazoos and stuff like that. So I was kind of like make it a bit more mad, like Ted Fest, but like Ted Fest is just insanity where there's people, it's out on an island off, off the west coast of Ireland, and there's people walking around dressed as cigarettes or peanuts because of one, one scene in the Father Ted episode. And <laughs> That madness, I'm trying trying to bring that onto the stage as well. So there's a lot of um, uh, a lot of pe- yeah, there's interaction. I do my music, I do my, but there's a lot of interaction as well. You know, so that kind of stuff, and it really lends itself to it, Father Ted, to that craziness. There's like a unit. It's like it's got its own world. I think it should be a video game. You know, it, it's 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 got its own it's universe. Incredible game. <laughs> Oh, yes, that needs to happen. Yeah, yeah, it's, because it's got its own mini universe and, and uh, even like there's so much detail. If you look at the set of Father Ted, it's, there's a lot of detail in there, you know. Uh, everything has a like, even in the Eurovision, the Song for Europe episode, uh, the, when the ghost of the scoreboard, you should freeze frame that because the names of the songs and the bands is brilliant. They didn't just throw up anything, they thought about everything, you know. Um, so it, it could definitely be a video game. I don't know what the aim of it would be, but picking Bishop Brennan up the arse or something, I don't know. But <laughs> what, what you would have to do to get to do that, I don't know. <laughs> have, have any of like the other former cast of Father Ted like seen the show or been involved in the show? Well, originally I was touring a good bit with Patrick McDonald, and uh, we did, but we would just kind of do. 
the lovely girls competition, but we but I'm basically just do our stand up. No, so I'd, oh yeah, I've done it with him in Galway, where I um did, he came on as a guest, yeah, and then I showed a few clips of him of his episode, a few clips of it, not all of it. Um, yeah, he was really into it. I'd really love if if I, if it if it can make it bigger. I'd love to bring other uh, characters on for and do little bits with them like like Pat McDonald my, uh, people who've done a bit of stand up I guess you know mm. yeah people like that yeah just think about it we're discussing the tour and what you do but where did the idea even come from to do this because it, it's a uh, great idea yeah it started off I was asked to do a Q&A type event in one two of them one in was Wigan and Halifax in the different theatres there and uh, they asked me would I come over and do this they said, let's call it a celebration of Father Ted, but we're going to show an episode, we'd do a Q&A, and I was going, well, yeah, I could do a bit of stand-up. I might as well do a bit of stand-up as I'm doing. Uh, so it started off like that, and then a promoter in the UK said, oh, that sounds, that looks really good. I think we could sell that. But we eventually, after about four or five shows, we dropped the Q&A because it was just too serious, and people were asking very serious questions. <laughs> and... Uh, well, they were kind of going. Uh, what was it? You know, what was the atmosphere like in in uh, Ireland in the nineties? That they, they were kind of getting into the whole religion thing and all that, and I just didn't want to go there. Yeah, no. And yeah. you know, uh, so uh, so I just dropped that and made it. I do a little bit of a quiz or whatever, and so replaced the Q and A with a kind of a quiz, and then added more visuals and. Um, just kind of made it into a multimedia stand-up musical interactive thing with lots of props. <laughs> so everything is there, you know. You've you've worked on like quite a lot of different projects in TV and stuff like that. Like I think I saw somewhere that you played Hitler before. Was that right? I did yeah, I played Hitler in a, <laughs> a, a short film called Adolf and Eva, wasn't it? Is it Eva? No, what's her name? I think it's Eva. Eva, Eva Braun? Eva Braun, it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I know my Nazi history, apparently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, no, that was that was, uh, that was was quite funny. I don't know if it's still on YouTube, but uh, it was on YouTube for a while. It might have been taken down. Ah, probably YouTube took it down, yeah. <laughs> um, I, uh, it was like Adolf and Eva bickering. Basically, as a normal couple would once, you know, the glamour of the whole Third Reich is gone. <laughs> They're in the bunker. Things haven't gone well. And no, Eva yeah. is going, look, uh, she kind of has a map and she shows how badly things are going. <laughs> and... Um, and Adolf is in denial, and he's just drawing. He's he's gone back to his art, and um, uh, 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 and uh, yeah, that that that's no. It was actually really funny. It was actually quite a funny film. Um, I I hope I can get it, get back up on YouTube sometime. Uh, <laughs> Would definitely love to see that. Um, are you uh, still just back on the on the father's head thing very quickly? You have a podcast. You have Pod Rooney. And you have mm. Talking Ted as well, where you'd obviously have the previous, is it the actors and actresses that were on the show back on to talk about their roles and stuff in, in Father Ted, is that correct? Yeah, and Talking Ted, we would go through one one episode at a time in each episode, and, and we did the first season, and have an actor who played a part in uh, that particular episode, just talk about what it was like to... You know, how, basically what, what we're talking about now, what it was like on set, and what... what, what um, the audition and all that kind of stuff and maybe but uh yeah that went really well but uh, i've just been really busy so we have to get the second season up but i've been i've gone back to i've gone to university and i'm doing gigs as well so i'm trying to do assignments and gigs at the same time and i just haven't time to ring up and book actors for the yeah. second season of talking to head so well what we're talking about to uni just just if you don't mind talking about it i'm curious 
Oh, yeah, you know, it was actually lockdown that really influenced it, I think, because I was reading a lot. And then I thought, oh, I'd like to study. But first of all, I was thinking of doing philosophy. And thank God I didn't do it. I did multimedia, you know, because multimedia doesn't have as many essays. It's there's a lot of the assignments are practical assignments. And oh, man, like, I mean, the essay, essays are hard work. So. I, I thank God I did that, not philosophy. I was going to do philosophy in Trinity College. I think it was basically I just wanted to go to Trinity College, you know, but <laughs> I'm not going there, you know. It, it, it would have looked good to be walking in and out of Trinity College. But, um, yeah, I'm doing that. So but I, so, so when I'm touring, I am quite often have to be, during the day, on the laptop, finishing off some uh, assignment on... Uh, on Adobe, on After Effects, or Premiere Pro, or something like that, or writing an writing an essay. I mean, there was one time I was doing a gig in um, I can't remember what the theater was, but Bristol, I think. Um, I come on, I do a little bit, I introduce the episode, then I ran into the dressing room and finished off an assignment and sent it. <laughs> just, just got it in on time, and then came back out on stage. That is amazing. That's phenomenal. That is <laughs> What a story yeah. to tell. <laughs> it took me a few minutes to switch from assignment mode to stand-up mode. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's was... basically almost like you just went, guys, watch, just watch it a second. I've, I've, got, I've got to be... So... I'm back in a minute. Just watch that. I'll be back in a sec. Shit, shit, shit. Shit. <laughs> shit. La, 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 I'll do. Right, anyway, I'm still going cool. I've got, I've got, I've got ten minutes, shit. <laughs> got it in. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just got this image of you pressing send and be like, fuck off, and then running back on stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So horses. <laughs> <laughs> um, but oh. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, that was hectic. That was hectic. Yeah, I leave it the very last minute, a very last minute on everything. But okay, I've got it in there. I'm still, I'm still haven't failed anything. I'm fine. Okay. Smashing it. <laughs> So it was actually weird because some of the uh, like the first year of, of uni, we were all wearing face masks, so you didn't really see who anybody was. But then, like uh, after that, we um, some of the students would go, "Oh, my dad really likes you," or "My granddad thinks you're hilarious." Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, yeah. <laughs> I love I love that. I started a job in the middle of the pandemic as well. And now I'll see people who are not wearing masks. I'm like, I have no idea who you are. But like, <laughs> they'll talk to me. I'm like, I don't recognize your face. But like, I don't know who you are. Yeah, yeah, it's a very different uh people have you look at their eyes, you just seen their eyes for a few months, you yeah. imagine a much more symmetrical bottom <laughs> half of their face. And then when you see what it really is like, you're going, oh, I wouldn't imagine that. It's like when someone shaves a beard off, I guess, you know. Yeah. It, it, you've only known with a beard. It's like, as I say that, Jamie, can we have it? It's all she ever known. The other go, it, it's, it's me, it's Michael. You go, fucking hell, is it? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I just realised I said that to two people wearing beards. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, to be fair though, you're right. If I shave this off, I look like a twelve year old girl. It's fine. It's, it's absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> it's why it's there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So um, one one project we do need to talk about is that uh, Mr. Stevens over here was lucky enough to come and interview you in person for a vlog yeah. he released all about the pri- for the private screening of Baz Black's movie Dublin Crust. Yeah. How how was it making the movie with a uh, Mr. Irish Hollywood Baz Black. Yeah, that was a really good uh, part to get because it's been in a band again. Like I hadn't been in a band for yeah. years. Getting to, I played the bass in the band, so I did learn the bass lines. Um, they didn't have me plugged in though, which was really annoying. So, yeah. uh, but if you look at my fingers, I am playing the bass line. Um, um, but. Uh, it's just great. It's it's great being in a band. Like the mo- you can just look heroic with an an instrument. It's as long as it's you know say it's a bass or a guitar, not not a synth. I don't think you can look heroic playing a synth. But uh, uh, brilliant. I like the character. I like the kind of uh, 
a just mean, just sulky type of a dude. And uh, it's a good story. It's a good story. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to do well. It's going to come out in the cinemas this autumn, I believe. And what I did love about, obviously, without giving anything away, is your facial expressions when playing. So you talked about Arnold's facial expressions earlier on Father Ted. Your facial expressions in Dublin plus playing the bass are absolutely superb. You look like you're having the greatest time of your life. <laughs> oh, really? Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I am, indeed. I mean... It's actually uh, it was great that it wasn't plugged in because then you can just concentrate on the on the poses. The problem, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean that is a good thing about mine. And I have uh, uh, I have heard you know you know you, you read about bands when they went on top of the pops and they just had mm. mine and they just had the best time of their lives. It's great, <laughs> great. Like it's amazing. Um, so yeah, oh yeah, facial expressions. Yeah, well, I am enjoying myself. I am absolutely being a punk at the age of fifty nine is bad. <laughs> was the screen in the first time you'd actually seen the completed movie? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hadn't seen anything, anything before that. So, um, yeah, like uh, it is weird. Like, I don't. I have to say, like looking at myself, to be honest. Uh, so that was that's hard going <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say how was it like watching your performance in real because some people like you say some actors are like I will film it I'll give it a thumbs up and then I'm off I do not want to watch it no yeah no it's not no it's not easy it's not easy I don't know what it is but I guess it's like do you uh, you're going to like do you know you don't ever see your head from the side or the back Normally, unless you have, you know, eyes on stocks or some kind of a very long neck. Um, but um, so it's just weird. You go, do I look like that? Oh, my God. Look at my ears. <laughs> well, you're not really sitting there going, oh, yeah, the plot's amazing. You're going, oh, my God, look at the state of me. <laughs> so uh, it's that. I don't I don't particularly enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was good. No, I mean, I knew it was a good film, and it was really good and great reaction and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah two two stunning narrations. You can't go wrong with that. How did um, how did you get involved with the film? I know I asked you, but I can't believe you forgot to get involved. <laughs> Oh uh, well, Baz just asked me. I know Baz. Baz is kind of lives near me, and I know him around. I mean, how would you not know Baz because he's covered in well, tattoos? Yeah. Um. Well, no, I had actually met him a few times around, and uh, and then he got in. I really, I've heard that he was getting into acting, and um, I sent him a few messages. I think he put up a short film uh, that he'd done, and I went like, "That's really good and stuff," and hope things are going well for you, or whatever. And then he, then he just contacted me with the script. He just sent emails to me, and I really liked it. And um, uh, then it was going ahead, and it was really good. I like, like, I'm really jealous because Tom here got to go. He got to watch it. He had a great time, and I'm just sat here like I've seen a couple of clips, and that's about it. And I really want to see this bloody movie now because it sounds incredible. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But sure, you will see it soon. I'd say, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah cinemas are beyond. Uh, it'll be streamed somewhere, but yeah. <laughs> Joe, before we start wrapping up, I've had an absolute incredible... But what, what do you have coming up? What are you working on at the moment that you want people to go check out? Well, I did a, uh, my own short film called Dead Dog, which is about how mm, how the possible death of a dog turns a comedian's career around. <laughs> and, uh, that sounds fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it was just like inspired by the whole idea that at Edinburgh, there were a lot of confession type show or shows uh, about, God, I don't know, a parent dying or something. And sorry to laugh, but uh, almost anything bad happened to you, uh, another comedian would go, that'd be a great Edinburgh show. Do you know what I mean? If you broke your leg, they go, you should do an Edinburgh show about that. Or And so I had this idea that that some guy um it's basically a comedian his career is 
I suppose it isn't going that well. And then he's, he's, he's told that his dog is dying. Uh, and he does a confessional, like kind of a thing on Facebook. We're going, oh, I'm really going to miss this dog. Blah, blah, blah. It get, he gets loads of hits. But the vet has made a, an error. The dog is not dying. <laughs> but he's already, his agent goes, "That you're getting loads of hits. We've got to book a tour on the back of this. So what do you do? Do you kill the dog? Oh, no, and have I... it. And, uh, well, we, you'd only find out if you watch the film. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um... where is it? On YouTube, you say. Oh, sorry, it's not. It was on the RT player. You can't get it in the UK at the oh. moment. Uh, but when it gets off the, I'll put it on my website when the when the thing uh, when the um when the RT player thing runs out. Yes, you know that's that like looks... RT is the uh, national TV station here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then so I'm going to shoot another film this year, but sure, that's another question and uh, uh that's all i want uh is there anything else no that's it i'm touring and i'm gonna shoot another film incredible Amazing. mr stevens do you have any more questions for our wonderful guest i do joe because i imagine your suit's getting very cold right about now um i have i have, <laughs> I have one left um when you first started out as as young master rooney when you were growing up and whatnot did you ever think that your life would be you'd be here today doing what you've accomplished um gosh no i suppose when i think about it it's pretty good yeah uh, i would be very happy i'd say with what i've accomplished a young me would be going would be would be going wow well you traveled all over the world doing doing stand up that's amazing yeah i think that would be really amazing to tell my 10 year old self that that yeah. that was going that is pretty good. It's pretty good. Or incredible. Or even twenty five year old self when you thought the world would nephew band is split up. <laughs> yeah, well absolutely. <laughs> the band is split up and I was too old and uh, and what was gonna do in my life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, pretty yeah. damn well, you have to say. No. Ah cool, thanks very much. That's good to hear from you. Thank you. <laughs> Joe, have you got any plugs, websites, social medias, anything you want people listening to this go and check out? Yeah, well, on Instagram, I'm at Joe Rooney Comedian, and uh, I um, on Facebook, I have Joe Rooney Comedian, Joe Rooney Comedian in general. But I have a website called Joe Rooney Comedian, but it's just been revamped at the minute. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Social media wise, I do Twitter. I don't do Twitter anymore since Elon Musk took over and went affect ah, twitter you know what i mean <laughs> it's it's a mind feeling there now like i don't even think elon knows what's going on <laughs> no no he probably end up banning himself at this stage <laughs> <laughs> and you can buy you can buy a blue tick which is unbelievable bullshit yeah i don't understand i just i don't get that at all he's trying to claw back his 44 billion isn't he, wherever it is because he wanted to pull out in he? he's like shit um, how can I call it? I know, I'll sell blue ticks for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, good luck with that. Good, good luck with that, Elon Musk. Uh, yeah, things aren't going well for him, but he's a bit, he's, he's got far too much money, so uh, hopefully he can lose it a bit more, you know? <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Yeah. I was going to say, I can't see him going broke anytime soon. I think he'll be all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, probably down to his last 200 billion or something. Yeah. Joe, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for doing this. It means the world. Uh, thanks a lot for having me on, and it's been great chatting to you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you so much, Joe. Go and meet your super. <laughs> All <laughs> right, thanks so a lot. Much. Cheers, my friend. You take care of yourself, and we'll see you soon. Nice to chat to you. All right, good luck. Thank you, you so much, Joe. Take care, buddy. Bye bye. Cheers. What an absolutely superb conversation joe is just amazing <laughs> realize it's i hadn't seen it yet this week <laughs> it's so great it's just it's just as mental as you want it to be yeah. um if you want to talk about pink castles and uh, you want to talk about comedy in russia um you know and then obviously father ted this is this is the interview for you so and adolf hitler oh yes and adolf hitler as well there's some <laughs> absolutely wonderful stuff in there so uh 
We hope that you, Joe, thank you so, so much for taking the time to chat to us. I know, like Jamie said, you don't do this very often, so it means the world that you came on. And we really hope that you all enjoy listening to it, which is we did for recording it. It's about getting into schools and talking to young people because, you know, I, I know that people can change. Uh, and, it, and it's about talking to people and getting them to understand and perhaps step back from violence and, and prejudice and whatever. And we just need to work together and keep on the good fight there. Absolutely. Hey there, guys. We are ecstatically happy to announce that we are associated with the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. The times are changing and with the unfortunate death of Sophie, those changes have made a massive impact for the future. If Sophie was with us still today, I can guarantee what you are doing will still be reaching so many lives of young teenagers, young adults, and those who wish to be as different as possible. So thank you very much. To find out more about this incredible foundation and all the work they do, and more importantly, how you can help, head on over to www.sophielancasterfoundation.com. Mr. Stevens. Oh, I'm croaky there. It's only audience participation time. <clears throat> Let's participate. Quick. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to participate in Jamie's participation challenge. This week, we said, following on from a discussion we had a couple of weeks ago, when you go to a bar, it's always, it's Pepsi. Is that okay? But what about a drink that you want to have with Pepsi instead of Coke? With that in mind, following the treaching, we said, what is the best alcoholic accompaniment for Pepsi? Move over, Coke. Let's give Pepsi a chance. What say you, Mr. Stevens? None. I'm actually quite gutted that Sam Chapman didn't get involved in this, but no. uh, because he would have said everything. Like Pepsi yeah. goes, he has a Pepsi addiction. For those who don't know, go back and check out the oracles of Sam Chaplin. Pepsi um, Bally Castle. That's what he would have said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I would, I don't really like it. So I don't really, I'm Coke all the way. I've always been Coke. So, so I prefer Pepsi. I'm weird. I'd, I love Pepsi Max. It's, it's yeah. not weird. Why does everybody think it's weird? Like, if Very you nice, Pepsi, like... that's fine. It, it's, but that's how it's been ingrained into you. Is this... Pepsi, though, is that all right? It's because Pepsi doesn't have a fucking Christmas advert. That's what it is, isn't it? Makes us feel Pepsi inferior. Oh, oh, shit. They are, to be fair. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you, Pepsi's boys. great, but their advertising department since the 90s and the Spice Girls has gone to shit. Pretty much. I forgot all about that advert until I literally just spoke about it. <laughs> I, I couldn't think of anything for this to be honest but because I'm so used to having things with coke if I do have a mixer which is very rare I drink drinks with mixers anyway or in really farmer then mixers but, but there is one in the suggestions that I do really want to try so we'll see how that goes let's get some comments in Lisa Clemens former guest says flavoured rum dragonberry is my favourite what the Ooh. fuck is dragonberry it does exist. I've heard of dragon fruit, but I've never heard of dragon berry. So mm. I imagine they're similar ilk. Maybe. But yeah, rum and coke is a thing. So rum and Pepsi, but a flavoured rum. I could see it. It could work. Christian James, another former guest, says, well, back in my day, it was aftershock. You younguns may now call it fireball. Plus in our day, 70% of the bottle was sugar as a way to hose us. But it was, oh. it was good. You just high off your tits and drunk all at the same time. Oh, God. I couldn't have worse. See, this is this one is the one though I kind of want to try. Claire Jones, it's hard because Coke is the go to for mixers, but I'm sure it tastes great with cherry sours, cherry sours and Pepsi. I want to okay. try that because it'd be like cherry Pepsi, I imagine. Because you know, cherry and Pepsi before you look at me and go, yes, it would be, wouldn't it? Um... <laughs> That's why I say it's strong, Jamie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> John Westwood says there's only one answer for me, and I bet you can't guess it. Jack Daniels, Jack, father. Yes, yeah. of course it is. You would have Jack Daniels with everything, probably on your cereal in the morning. Wouldn't surprise me. Mac Mackenzie Kell with quite a few of these. The bin. Yeah, the, yeah. It's quite a lot of Pepsi hate in here, ladies and gents. Gemma Williams, Pepsi belongs in the bin, so no alcohol can improve it. Coca Cola all the way. Pepsi sucks. See, there's a lot of hate towards Pepsi. Nothing wrong with Pepsi. 
Amy Samson, Malibu, especially lovely with a cherry or raspberry flavour. Malibu and Pepsi. See, again, it's one you normally hear Malibu and Coke, but... Nope. Let me guess, is Malibu Malibu the cold play of alcohol? No, I haven't forgiven you for that last week. Jesus Christ, I'm not very well. You've come at me like that. (laughs) Yeah, because I still haven't forgiven you for calling Bounty the cold play of chocolates. That's why. Just you can't deal with facts. It's all right, carry on. Abby Lloyd says Disarano. Disarano and Pepsi. I could see it. I could see it. Yeah. Nina Bryant, Nina Hewitson, Southern Comfort. I normally associate that with lemonade, personally. But... There we are. To me, to fair, a lot of these seem to be, well, it's what you'd normally have with Coke, but I think it tastes slightly better with Pepsi instead of Coke. <laughs> Lucy Bowen, Kraken or DMF? What's DMF? I have no idea. I thought I'm DMX, but that's rubber. a wrapper. And then I thought MDF, but that's wood. And then I thought DFS, but that's a sofa shop. So I have no idea what DMF is. I imagine it's going to be a rum, I'd imagine. Dead Man's Fingers? <sighs> ah. Yes, I didn't think of the acronym. Well done, Mr. Stevens. Thank Always you, prefer sir. a Pepsi Max to a Coke Zero from drinking rum and Coke at home. And Diet Coke is grim. So, yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it fucking is. I agree with that. I'm not a fan of Diet Coke. I only drink it if I have to. <laughs> Stefan Phillips belongs in the sink. See, so, yeah, some more hatred towards Pepsi. Vincent Prera, which is weird to me because it's Kevin Smith's childhood friend and he's commented on this post. Always weird to me. And he says, anyway, I seem to recall the Ashley Judd character in the film Friedkin drinking vodka mixed with Pepsi. Yeah, vodka makes me sick. So yeah. and that does not... I mean, vodka Coke, it's a thing though, isn't it? I mean, literally, Coke and Pepsi will go with anything. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, Apart from milk. Oh. <laughs> That's what cat cheese is made of. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Brogdon, Disarano and Pepsi. Tastes like Dr. Pepper. Yeah, I'm definitely in for that. I'm definitely that. in for that. I want to try that. Adam McAvoy is... Bold, bold answer here. Pepsi is way better than Coke in a Long Island iced tea. Oh, I've never had Long Island. I don't think it's ever appealed, Long Island iced tea. I think I have. I wasn't the biggest fan. But when you mix them with classic cocktails, that is a bold claim, Adam. A bold claim. A couple more. Dean Salmon, turpentine, because it's the only thing to make Pepsi any good. (laughs) (laughs) Two left. Jess Wiles, another former guest. Says nothing goes with Pepsi because Pepsi ruins everything. Pepsi is never okay. <laughs> serious hatred towards Pepsi. I don't know what's going on. And last but not least, he's back again. Fucking love that Ryan's back. Ryan Williams says, so this is interesting because my uncle in Pennsylvania was high up on the ranks of Pepsi corporate. And in my teens and 20s, I used to combine Pepsi with different types of alcohol because I thought my uncle would be able to hook me up with a job if I did research for him. That's clever. Genius. Unfortunately, all the research just made me a functional alcoholic. But 24 years later, I'm able to put my research to use. I felt bad laughing at that, but at the same time, it is kind of funny. You know what I mean. Cherry Pepsi and Jägermeister almost taste like red vines. They're like, get me on board. I want to try that. That sounds nice. red vines is. So. It's like strawberry laces, probably. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Di Serrano and Pepsi taste like Dr. Pepper. Pepsi and Captain Morgan taste like Pepsi but with a kick to it. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> cherry Pepsi and Cherry Vanilla Morgans taste like cherry pie. That I want to try. Ooh. Ooh. Quantro and Pepsi almost taste like a Toblerone orange. Interesting. See, these are the sort of answers I was after, Ryan. This is why we save you to last, my friend. And he says, I'm sure there's a couple of recipes, but that's all I can remember right now. Hey, you've, you've, just, you've just given me like four drinks I want to try, so you're a hero. Absolutely. That's an outside class, always. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> just going to drink loads of Pepsi with things. But uh, we appreciate everybody participating in Jamie's challenge. So thank you so much, everybody that did contribute, even if it wasn't read out. So thank you so much. We've enjoyed Jamie's participation challenge, Tom's journal, Callum's treachings, the absolute wanky box at the beginning, and the interview. But enjoy the other 77 editions of the Chronicles of Podcasts wherever you get your podcasts from. Google, Spotify, Apple, etc. You can also find us on YouTube at the Chronicles of Podcasts. Hit that subscribe hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell to get notified when new videos are released. And comment, comment, comment. Thank you, Ron. 
You can also find all of our hashtag WWW Way Back Wednesdays on there, all of our Bloodstock blog, well, blood blogs on there, our Bloodstock interviews are on there, and our Dublin Cross blog is on there, and we'll be adding so much more this year. We cannot wait. Um, you can also have our Facebook at the Chronicles Podcast. Uh, hit the like button, share it everywhere, tell all your mates, put some memes or gifts or whatever, or just say hello. We don't mind. But Jamie, while we're doing that, where else could you find us? You could find us watching Father Ted and wondering who did steal that old grey whistle. Absolutely. Or on the Twitter, at TCO Pod. And whilst you're looking for the old grey whistle and whilst you're on our Twitter, what else could you find us on? Putting your cat cheese on toast under the grill, ready for a delicious snack. Absolutely. Or on the Instagram. All that. At TCO Pod. We're also on LinkedIn at the Chronicles of Podcast. Come and connect with us there. We're also on TikTok at TCO Pod. Or you can come on down to our beautiful, spankingly really gorgeous little website at www.thechroniclesofpodcast.com. We now have a shop, ladies and gentlemen. So if you want to get involved, you want to get yourself a Chronicles of Podcast t shirt or hoodie, please come on down to our shop at our website and uh, indulge. Indulge yourself. Voice up a little bit. Hey, day is a couple of weeks away. Um, yeah, and other than that, just come follow us absolutely everywhere and hope that you enjoy the show. Thank you very much for being here again for another week. Before we get out of here, let's say thank you to a few of our friends. Every single little piece of music you hear on this show is delivered to you by one man. That man is Mr. Singer-Songwriter Matt Roberts. Go follow Matt on all of his social medias at Matt Roberts Music. Go follow him on Spotify, ready for new music that's coming out very, very soon. But of course, check him out on all the socials. As we hinted last week, he's got a very special project as well as new music coming soon. So make sure you're following Matt because there's some stuff there you do not want to miss, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, we have to say a massive thank you to Mr. Braden Barry and his Stay Cozy Clothing. Head on over to www.staycozyclothing.com. Come have a look in the shop, see what you like to look of. This t shirt, Tom's hat, those hoodies we're sometimes wearing, whatever it may be, add them to your basket. And then when you're done, head on over to the checkout and enter the discount code The Chronicles and get yourself 10% off your order. Nice and simple. Can't you can't get any easier than that. Oh. It's just dropped a 25% off sale right now. Oh, well, there you go. I didn't see that before we went live. So, even more of a reason to get involved that'd be 35%. Ooh, quick maths. And of course, we have to say thank you to our friends at the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. They're stamping out prejudice, hatred and intolerance everywhere. We will fly the flag of this foundation forever because it is a charity that means the absolute world to us. It is a charity that is doing what it can to help raise awareness for those who are being bullied and targeted simply because they are being the person they want to be. How bloody dare they, eh? He says sarcastically. What happened to Sophie can never happen again. It, it just can't, quite frankly, especially today in 2023. So please head on over to sophielancasterfoundation.com. I say it every week and I'm going to say it every week. Head on over, hit that hate crime tab, fill in that questionnaire. If you've been ever treated differently because of the way you dress, the music you listen to, whatever it may be, fill that in. Share it with your friends, share it with your family, everyone you may know, because the more evidence we can send to the court, the closer we will get to achieving Sylvia's goal of making the alternative subculture a strand of the hate crime like it should be, because quite frankly, it's happened to enough of us for it to show that it is a targeted hate crime. I don't really know what more evidence they need, but apparently they do. So let's achieve that. Let's help Sylvia. Sylvia. Let's help Sylvia achieve. Oh, my God, I did it again. Let's help Sylvia achieve her goal. It will mean the absolute world to us. We cannot wait to work with the foundation in 2023. We've got some incredible plans lined up, and we'll let you guys know all about it as soon as we can, really. And last but not yeah. least, thanks to this handsome bugger over here who managed to stay with us, even though he's clearly not very well. <laughs> yeah, struggling boys, not going to lie. Um, another great interview, another great show. Joe, thank you so much for coming on the show. We really, really appreciate your time, my friend. It was uh, great, and I really hope that everyone enjoys it as much as we did. So, um, Jamie, thank you to you too. Pleasure as always. As always, sir. It's been beautiful. Um, we'll see you all next week for Alex Siegel. And as for this week, we'll see you all next week. Goodbye, everybody. Bye! Bye.